Well, welcome everyone. We're going to wait just a moment to get started today to let people finish logging in. Okay. I'm just going to wait till one minute after the hour, and then we'll get started. Okay, why don't we go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Air Sea Fluxes from Space webinar series. Today we have uh, Bengman Kim from uh, 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 Pukyong yeah, National yeah. University, yeah, yeah, who's right. going to talk about unveiling the pivotal influence of sea spray heat fluxes on hurricane rapid intensification. It's a topic that is incredibly timely this week, at least for people in South Florida. So take it away. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, it's very great to give a presentation in uh, to the uh, flux measurement people and the modeling and who who is very interested in the hurricanes. Yeah. So uh, my name is Bang Min Kim. Uh, uh, let me introduce briefly. Uh, I worked for more than ten years polar region uh, before I moved to Busan, which is a uh, located at the Southeast Coast area. I moved to Busan of South Korea five years ago. Uh, after that, uh, uh, I had some pres pressure uh, to study uh, some ocean related stuff. So uh, basically I'm climate modeler. So I chose a topic on the typhoon uh, so it's the Asian people's hurricane. And uh, I, uh, from three years ago, uh, I started to study sea spray uh, impact on the hurricane rapid intensification. Okay. Uh, this work is collaborated work uh, with the uh, first author, uh, Sinil Yang, and uh, several, several people from USA. Uh, most of them are Tallahassee, Florida State University, Dong Xin, Steve Cook, uh, Chelsea, and Mark. They are my colleagues. Okay. Uh, so this work is recently published, published uh, to the journal Environmental Research Letter. So you can easily find, uh, you can search the title and you can find the paper. So the talk title is Unveiling the Pivotal influence of sea spray heat fluxes on hurricane rapid intensification. Uh, as the title says, we emphasize the uh, sea spray heat fluxes. Uh, we we have two kind of fluxes: latent heat flux, latent heat fluxes, and sensible heat fluxes. And among them, uh, we emphasize. The sensible heat flux is very effective uh, in the hurricane uh, rapid intensification. This is key message of this talk. Okay, <clears throat> let me start. Our rapid intensification events remain particularly uh, challenging to predict accurately. Uh, state of the art numerical models continue to fall short in reproducing observed hurricane intensity. Uh, although we have uh, many studies, we have a uh, still crucial gap in understanding ARC interactions during uh, hurricane in intensification. Among them, a large amount of sea spray uh, uh, are noted, and uh, they are generated by breaking ocean waves under very strong winds in the hurricanes. Uh, many, many scientists uh, uh, noted that uh, it will have a critical role, but we don't understand very well yet. <clears throat> uh, sea spray actually significantly influences heat and moisture exchanges at the ocean surface. And uh, some studies noted uh, sea spray effects led to a more realistic representation of uh, typhoon 
rapid intensification and uh, an improvement in maximum wind speed uh, is uh, reported uh, in many studies. So uh, my uh, our uh, work in in our work uh, we have a primary objective. Uh, we want to shed light on the specific laws of sp spray mediated sensible and latent heat fluxes in hurricane rapid intensification. So what we do is that based on the uh, uh, some well known uh, parameter using well known uh, parameterization, this spray parameterization, we conducted uh, sensitivity experiments with the varying key parameters of spray flux parameterization. I think key parameters, key parameters is uh, not proper uh, uh, proper expression. I think uh, most uncertain parameters uh, is more proper uh, proper. Uh, proper word, uh, because uh, we would like to uh, point out which part is more uncertain and which is uh, uh, what is the best result with the uh, which combination, uh, the combination, which combination of uncertain parameters gives best result. This is our motivation. So we try to evaluate uh, model performance uh, with the varying uh, key parameters against observational data. What we used to, uh, is um, drop zone the observational data as a key observed parameters. Uh, and then uh, after the uh, finding the optimal parameters, we investigate some various uh, uh, devastating, devastating hurricane uh, hurricanes, we apply uh, the parameters to the previous hurricanes and see uh, the impact. Yeah. So we the target hurricanes are uh, Ida, Harvey, and Michael, and Ian. They are uh, four, most four high impact Atlantic hurricanes, I think before for Helen recently. Yeah. So we tested four cases. The mother we used is Quast uh, uh, mother. Uh, Quast mother has a three component, wharf as atmospheric component, roams as oceanic component, and the wave watch three as a, a wave mother. So uh, we coupled these three components to, uh, to uh, we coupled the three these components and we modified Quast mother the key modifications uh, include, uh, so we modified the coupling framework to be suitable for wave coupled models, especially for this study. For example, uh, in the wave watch model, we uh, have a, a white caps, white caps fraction. White caps fraction is kind of a, a area fraction of a, a wave phenomena occurs in the unit area. And then, but that is the uh, wave watch uh, intrinsic variable, but uh, usually quasi model do not uh, uh, deliver that parameter to the wharf parameter, wharf mother, but uh, using the coupler modification, we deliver that uh, white caps uh, fraction to the wharf mother because that's very essentially important for the uh, sea spray parameterization. So uh, basically, we implemented uh, uh, so Andreas sea spray parameterization to the WAF mother. So, so I will explain the uh, briefly explain the uh, modified parameterization uh, later. Uh, and uh, we simply uh, changed the surface layer scheme a little bit uh, uh, suitable for hurricanes hurricane. Uh, simulation. So those are key modifications. Okay. So I would like to tell you some uh, key modif key parameterization, uh, sea spray mediated fluxes parameterization. So in the equation one, uh, total, total sensible heat, uh, total latent heat flux and total sensible heat flux can be uh, written uh, like this. 
So HR int is a uh, uh, you can see that the uh, interfacer. This is a very conventional flux. Uh, every model has this kind of component HR latent heat flux and HS uh, sensible heat flux at the interface. Okay, and then um, spray effect is added to this kind of uh, conventional fluxes. Uh, alpha QL is the spray mediated uh, uh, latent heat flux and beta QS minus alpha minus gamma QL is kind of a sensible heat flux impact of spray mediated component. So you can see that uh, conceptually uh, following the Andreas error 2015, conceptually we have a uh, interfacial heat flux here. And then, so you can see that the uh, spray is generated with a wave and then uh, and then we have a, a droplet, drop, droplet evaporation layer. We can define uh, this surface. And then the so total heat flux is uh, uh, to the boundary layer. And then we have some flux component here represented by this droplet, okay? So, each QR and each, I'm sorry, this is a, uh, okay, this is a, uh, this QR and QS is very important. It's a direct uh, flux uh, from the uh, droplet, uh, uh, C-spray droplet. Uh, QS and QR, uh, they are parameterized, param parameterized for numerical model uh, by fail or error. 1994. So we adopted their formula QS and QR, and we could uh, put these two QS and QR into this equation, and we can calculate those proxies. So uh, in this formulation, we focused on the, uh, okay, so uh, we searched the previous researches and try to find the key uncertainties in the parameterization. We found that alpha and beta and gamma parameters are so, so uncertain. So we need to, uh, because of we don't have a much, much observation, C-spray observation, because uh, in the, in the, especially in the high wind uh, condition, so it's very dangerous to measure directly. So um, alpha and beta are, uh, very uncertain parameter, but uh, alpha and beta actually control the magnitude of spray mediated latent and sensible heat fluxes. So that's very important parameter. So, so basically our sensitivity test uh, changes alpha and beta. Uh, actually we did 28 sensitivity ex experiments varying alpha and beta. Gamma is uh, a little bit uh, certain. So gamma is uh, fixed to alpha minus 0.5. So basically we investigated a combination of alpha and beta and see the result and try to verify using the drop Junde data. This is a key flow of our study. So I will skip this uh, slide. We chose four hurricane, they are category, category four and five and lowest pressure and highest wind and Economic damage, something like that. Yeah. So uh, I I need to address this one. So we conducted uh three kind of simulation. Uncoupled uncoupled simulation is uh, just atmospheric matter only simulation, and coupled is a warp and loams uh, coupling without sea spray impact. The last one is spray warp loams wave watch with sea spray parameterization. So for for each experiment, we conducted 28 uh, sensitivity experiments. So it's a very huge uh, combination, uh, model simulation. So this is a model domain. You can see the Gulf of Mexico here, okay. <clears throat> so this is uh, actually uh, the key result of my study. So, so you can see X, uh, this is a normalized uh, root mean scale error. So basically, uh, this measure uh, calculates the uh, model and observation uh, difference. We can uh, uh, try to quantify how model is different with the uh, 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 hurricane uh, minimum pressure 
and hurricane maximum wind speed. And uh, using the drop zone the data, this is a track data, hurricane uh, HF, uh, uh, hurricane, National Hurricane Center's hurricane track data. And this is a drop zone the data. So uh, we can, using the drop zone the data, we compare the uh, tangential wind at one kilometer level and radial velocity at one kilometer level. We compare mother and drop zone the uh, data. So, so each 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 box represents each simulation. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So beta varies from zero to fifteen. Alpha varies uh, zero to three point seven five. Oh, so this is a, a typical range, and um, so each rectangle represents each simulation. So we have a twenty-eight simulation, and this is a sorry minimum uh, pressure, maximum wind, and tangential wind. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Uh, compared to the uh, control simulation, where alpha equals zero, beta equals zero, uh, lower left corner is a control simulation. Uh, so without spray uh, effect. And you can see that the root mean scale error uh, decreases when we increase the beta and some uh, increase alpha. So mainly beta is controlling parameter because we can, if we increase beta, the Sorry, the normalized uh, error becomes quickly uh, drop. So increasing beta reduces observed error much. And so importantly, you can find the uh, uh, rectangle and circle and uh, triangle here. This is the alpha and beta parameter combination from previous studies. So the, the rectangle, the um, uh, considering four uh, variables, the most opti optimized uh, rectangle is the red uh, circle, re uh, red box. So you can see that uh, alpha is 2.5, beta is 10. We give the best result for uh, these uh, four uh, variables. So with four, this with alpha equal 2.5, beta uh, 10 uh, is very consistent with the uh, uh, recent study, uh, Andreas et al. 2008 is most close to uh, this parameter value. Okay. <clears throat> so this is uh, the, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I need to mention that uh, this sensitivity test is only applied to the hurricane uh, Ida case. Uh, so we uh, tested Ida case and then Ian, Michael and Harvey case, uh, we just use RPI for uh, 2.5 and beta equal 10 and see the result. So this is a, a EAN case. Uh, so the optimal parameters. So this is uncoupled case. This is a coupled case. This is spray case. So the shaded region is a radar reflectivity representing the precipitation and the uh, uh, radial, uh, radial and vertical wind component is represented by vector. And then potential temperature is a red contour and uh, tangential wind speed is black contour. So you can see that the, with the spray uh, parameterization, hurricane uh, regional structure is uh, pretty much intensified. And then I world structure is uh, much more uh, well organized. And you can see that the uh, tangential wind radiation wind error is much better in spray. Uh, uh, simulation. So hurricane structure is uh, much more improved improved than uncoupled and coupled with the uh, uh, with the uh, alpha equal to 0.5 and beta equal 10. Okay, this is our uh, main result. So so this is the uh, flux component. So in this figure, left hand side is sensor heat flux and right hand side right hand heat flux. Uh, so you can see that the uh, 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 if you focus sensible heat flux case, you can see that the uh, um, so some some warm color, warm uh, shaded region is a spray mediated sensible heat flux component, and blue color is a uh, interfacial or uh, sensible heat component. So when you compare uh, blue color and the warm color, then the uh, spray mediated sensible heat flux increased huge uh, fluxes more than 10 times over interfacial fluxes. 
when you look at the latent flux, there is a, some, uh, some increase due to the uh, spray mediated effect, but the most impact comes from the sensible heat flux uh, component. So this is a very interesting result, I think. Uh, and uh, I think this is a, uh, I'm not sure why this uh, still, uh, frankly speaking, I'm not sure why sensible heat flux is so, uh, so uh, magnified, but uh, uh, the, re uh, the study, but, but our study point out the importance of sensible heat flux med mediated by uh, sea spray. So uh, this is worth uh, to check in the uh, future studies, yeah. Uh, interestingly, the sea spray impact um, modified the track uh, uh, um, intensity a lot, but uh, uh, they uh, does not uh, affect the accuracy of hurricane track so much. You can see that the uncoupled couple spray impact or almost similar track, okay? So this is Ian Michael Harvey case with the uh, uh, optimized parameters. So this is a, a minimum pressure and maximum pre maximum wind speed for Ida, Ian, Michael, and Harvey case. You can see that compared to NH NHC uh, minimum pressure and maximum wind speed, uh, except for Harvey case, Ida, Ian, Michael, uh, spray mediated flux uh, case uh, improved a lot uh, compared to other cases. This is a very uh, promising result, I think. So this is a kind of summary uh, slide. You can see that the uh, so spray effect uh, has a two kind of effect. Uh, it's a, a spray mediated sensible heat flux and spray mediated uh, latent heat flux. You can see that the uh, this uh, red color is a uh, sensible heat flux component. You can see that uh, interfacial latent heat flux is uh, strong, but uh, latent heat flux, spray mediated uh, heat flux component uh, is uh, increased, but uh, uh, compared to interfacial uh, fluxes, uh, you can see that it's small. But uh, if you look at the sensible heat fluxes, uh, it is intensified more than 10 times 31 watt per square meter, uh, spray mediated heat flux becomes 154 uh, watt per square meter. This is uh, explained in this figure. And uh, this kind of uh, e effect uh, enhance updraft uh, near the eye wall, and then the secondary circulation of hurricane uh, enhanced a lot, okay. So this is a summary slide. Uh, you can see that the RMSE for minimum pressure uh, is much improved. And uh, so number seven and number uh, number six, number five, number six, seven, eight, uh, this is newly simulated after the publication of our paper. So number seven and number eight uh, is for East Asian uh, hyphen case actually. So you can see that uh, in all eight cases, uh, we have some uh, improved, uh, improved simulation. So we see that even though we don't know why sensible spray mediated sensible heat flux plays that kind of great role, but uh, it actually enhances the simulation pretty much. Yeah. So this is a summary. So the key finding is that Incorporation of sea spray significantly improves hurricane intensity predictions. And um, among the two fluxes, spray mediated sensor reflux play pivotal role in rapid intensification. In our study, optimal parameters are alpha equal 2.5 and beta equal 10. Uh, so this enhances hurricane structure a lot. Um, okay, so the limitation of this study is that uh, in the formulation, we have, even though we, I don't have much time, so uh, SA and SV parameters are recently emphasized that it's very important for describing sea spray impact because uh, that is a spray generate parameters. Basically, it describes the um, 
uh, spray number number of spray depending on the uh, radius size radial size of spray. So so if drumlet spray drumlet size is very small, it evap evaporate feed a lot. So when um when droplet evaporates, so evaporative cooling uh, cancel the sensible spray mediated sensible heat effect. Uh, when the spray becomes bigger and bigger, the evaporation uh, becomes uh, ev ev evaporation e efficiency becomes low because the the surface area becomes uh, less and less. So. So droplet size distribution is a very important parameter, but in this study, SA and SV uh, is just a constant, just a fixed value. So, um, so we need to think about the uh, uh, change SV and SA depending on the droplet size distribution, and uh, it, it can be a future study. And the current metric for determining alpha, beta, gamma is very heuristic because we just uh, compared uh, hurricane properties, uh, maximum wind speed and uh, minimum sea level pressure, that kind of thing. We just uh, compared the RMSA, but this is not direct observa observ observation of alpha and beta and gamma. But uh, uh, Mark Brosa and uh, I, and my colleague are trying to develop another uh, better method to uh, to measure alpha and beta and gamma using the drop zone data. So this is ongoing research, and we need more. Of course, we need more case studies. Uh, and uh, okay, so this is a limitation. So implicate implications are. Uh, we highlight importance of sea spray in hurricane intensity, rapid intensity uh, forecasting models, and we demonstrate value of drop zone data. Uh, if properly used, drop zone data is so powerful in parameterization tuning. And uh, so we have a potential for significant improvement in operational hurricane forecasting. And also we provide foundation for more sophisticated sea spray modeling in future research. Okay, thank you for your attention. Well, thank you very much for this really nice webinar. Questions? Okay. Then... I rushed it actually to make <laughs> 30 minutes presentation. So maybe while people are thinking of questions, I'll, I'll start by asking one. Um, I guess I'm just really amazed at the role of because the the prevailing story is that uh, latent heat matters and sensible heat is unimportant. And so it's really amazing to see sensible heat taking over. What makes that transition occur? Is it would it be the same if you had really big drops or um oh yeah. What what's do of you have course. a sense of what the physics is behind that? Of course, uh, this result of uh, spray mediated sensible heat flux were uh, actually this is unexpected. I uh, I thought like you uh, when mm -hmm. I simulate uh, simulated, and we got uh, this result, and results are very good. So uh, one reason uh, why latent spray mediated latent heat flux is not so effective is that. Uh, because of hurricane, uh, we already have a uh, 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 pretty much uh, latent heat flux from the uh, moisture increase in the at the just interface. Uh, uh. So uh, already uh, bottom layer is uh, quite saturated. So additional mm -hmm. supply of. Uh, spray mediated latent heat flux is uh, the lower is small. This is one reason. And the another uh, reason why sensible heat flux is then uh, so huge is uh, still, frankly speaking, uh, we don't know yet. Uh, but uh, uh, I think there is one uh, reasoning um, what we are thinking is that uh, SST is becoming warmer and warmer. And um, so spray mediated flux uh, Actually, uh, wave break, uh, wave breaking spray increases the droplet evaporation layer uh, higher, 
And then the so one droplet just uh, is delivered to the more uh, more upper, not upper, just a 10 meter or 15 meters high. Then it uh, directly contact with the more colder way, colder uh, air. So they can enhance some spray made sensible heat flux. But uh, as we investigate, so we are, still we are looking for why, but uh, uh, that kind of effect is uh, not explain everything because, so you can see that this is a QS and then you can see that beta is very big number with the, our parameterization, it's a number 10 then 10 times intensified uh, spray sensible, spray made sensible heat is intensified by beta. And so and Andres uh, actually, uh, in the Andres paper, beta is just uh, uh, addressed. It's a kind of uh, empirical tuning parameter. So using the observation, something like that. But I think if we look at detail uh, in the QS, there is a SV, it's a, it depends on the spray generated parameters. This is depending on the size distribution uh, related. But if we change this uh, is more diagnostic, I mean, the if we change SV uh, depending on the R, then beta should be uh, lower, yeah. Because uh, if the drum rate becomes bigger and bigger, then sensible heat flux uh, becomes bigger and bigger because uh, evaporative, uh, effect cooling effect becomes reduced. So because QS becomes more effective without amplified law or beta. This is kind of a complicated story, but uh, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> this is what I can explain up to now, yeah. Thanks. I see that Benjamin Barr has a hand up. Okay. Hello, um, thank you Hello. so much. This is uh, this has been a really interesting talk. Um, so I, I I have to say I, I'm actually doing some kind of similar research in sea spray and hurricanes, and I'm coming to very similar conclusions as what you're finding, uh, especially oh, yeah. regarding the role of the sensible heating. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think what you've done here is really great is um, you've actually really explored the parameter space. You said, you know, I increase the warming, I decrease the warming, I increase the latent heat decrease. That that grid, yes, the grid right here, and you've shown this really systematic response to sensible heating, regardless of what the assumptions of the model are. Right. And so, I think what's also interesting is that when you're when you go to beta to zero, all you get is an evaporative cooling effect. So you'll actually oh. decrease the sensible the net sensible heat flux because of the mm -hmm. evaporative cooling. And you've shown right. that that's um, that 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 makes it even worse. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I think this is this is really important stuff that you're showing. And I think I, I guess maybe if I have a question is, have you looked at sort of the other end of this spectrum to see if you found any response to what happens when you have cooling? Because I think that's connected to the dynamics of the boundary layer that are that are supporting the intensification. I think your question is very important, but I couldn't get it. The last part. Can you explain? So it? so you've looked at what happens with the warming? Have you looked at what happens with the cooling? Do you mm -hmm. see a decrease in the intensity when you have beta equals zero? Oh, beta equals zero. Then, so actually we looked at uh, every result. Uh, so we have, a, actually this is a 28 simulation. So you mean the, your question is, uh, do, do we carefully looked at the uh, uh, beta equal zero case? Is, is this your case? Yeah, I'm wondering if the beta equals zero cases, if the storms become more intense in the presence of spray or if they actually become less intense. Does uh, okay. the cooling impede the intensification? Oh, this case, case B is actually beta equal zero and alpha equal zero case, yeah. Okay. And this is a, a beta equal 10 and alpha equal 2.5 case. So okay. when we compare this one, uh, this is actually uh, just a wolf simulation, uncoupled simulation. So compared to wolf simulation, so coupled simulation without spray actually 
uh, much weaker hurricane simulation. Maybe the ocean cooling? Yeah, ocean cooling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially, uh, that's a very really good question. Actually, uh, in this table, actually, seven number seven and eight are typhoon case, actually, uh, East Asian coast. So the Gulf of Stream and the uh, East Asian coastal area are very different. One key difference is that we have a, a, a very cold water just below 20 meters of ocean surface. We have very cold water. So when hurricane, uh, even though SST is very warm, so when hurricane uh, comes to approach to Korean Peninsula, so hurricane quickly, sometimes quickly drops because of uh, so upwelling of very cold water into the surface. So you can see that uh, the change in lutein scale error, uh, it's not much dramatic compared to the Gulf Stream. I go, go for Mexico case. So less dramatic effect because of colder water. So, but still it has a, some uh, effect. Yeah, error. Okay. We do. Great. Yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah, I think you've got a great set of cases here to look at too, which is important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So do you have a publication? About um, this? It, it's in review. Um, I, I yeah. will, I want to get in touch with you offline. Um, I can show you oh, a yeah. similar. Yeah, so, very good. Yeah, I think we should definitely connect about this. Keep in touch. Yeah. So if I can ask another question, um, because this webinar series is nominally about air sea fluxes from space, I'm wondering, you've been using drop signs, but what satellite quantities would be most important for the types of things you're looking at? Do you need wind information or wave information or white capping or something else? Oh. Um, if possible, um, I think white caps uh, satellite measurement is it is that possible? I'm not a satellite guy, so <laughs> I'm a bit confusing. But uh, sometimes a uh, wind cat like that, uh, the kind of thing gives us some wave information. And also, uh, I know that the uh, satellite is very useful for flux estimation. So that kind of thing are uh, very valuable. Uh, to supplementary to our mm -hmm. drops data, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think the thing that people have <clears throat> made a lot of progress with is, is wave characteristics, mm -hmm. um, in some cases, just along the satellite path. So altimeters use that. Yeah. Uh, there's SAR information about waves. White mm -hmm. capping should be possible if you have good ocean color, but I don't know how far that's been taken. Maybe somebody else does. Yeah. But it sounds like that would be really relevant when you're thinking about spray. So, uh, yeah. Um, so are there other questions? And I guess finally, I have to ask you do you have? Have you been tracking the hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico? And do you have views about its rapid intensification? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, Gulf of Mexico, uh, so most of these uh, cases uh, exhibited rapid intensification, Ida, mm -hmm. Ida but the uh, Harvey case is very different. Yeah, Harvey case mm -hmm. actually. Compared to other cases, uh, there is a, some obvious reason why uh, spray is not working very well because mm -hmm. the landfall <laughs> is so fast. So uh -huh. it is disconnected with the ocean so fast. So mm -hmm. I think that's the reason. Yeah. So, yeah. Gulf of Mexico or SST. So it, it sounds like what happened yesterday, yeah. um, you could easily attribute to spray effects based on the work you've done. Uh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> I, I believe Helen also intensified a lot due to the warm warm SST in the yeah. Gulf. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Well, any other questions? If not, let's thank 
Sangmin again for a really interesting and engaging webinar. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I enjoyed a lot. <laughs> so this is the end of the webinar. So yeah, yeah. So okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Bye bye. See you.